Our guest in this segment, Delegate Larry Kump. He was in the legislature. He was out, then he was back in. Larry, good morning. How are you, sir? Good morning, and for sure and for certain, may God bless you all. How was the bodacious Cheryl and Bob the Wonder Dog? Oh, Cheryl was wonderful, and bodacious Bob the Wonder Dog is better than better. Well, you can't beat that. No, you right? can't. How was it being back in Charleston? And uh, I think we were talking before the show, and you told me there was about a 60% turnover in the delegates since the last time you were down there. It was. It was uh, really deja vu all over again. It was It, it was weird. Uh, I was worried about the quality of the, the new delegates, but there was only one or two of them that were wackos. <laughs> can, can you please name the two? Uh, no. I didn't think that you would, but it was worth a shot asking. Yeah. If you don't ask, you don't get it. You don't get it answered. That's right. Uh, so uh, this past weekend was a marathon uh, weekend, as it always is when you guys close always things is. down. Always is. Uh, a couple of things that we discussed during the course of the legislative session were passed, one of which you were telling me is that now it'll be a, a county commission in Berkeley County instead of a council. Yes, it uh, it passed. Uh, it was originally introduced. I was one of the co-sponsors. John Hardy was the prime sponsor in the House. We had some problems with uh, the attorney on one of the committees that was not real cooperative. So uh, uh, John asked uh, Senator Barrett uh, to introduce the bill over in the Senate side. It passed easily, went over to the House, passed the House easily. I don't know if the governor's changed it or signed it yet or not, but uh, I don't anticipate any problem with it. This went through your committee judiciary, correct? No, it went through uh, government order. Governor, I'm sorry. Yeah, we talked about that ahead of time. Yeah. My mistake. So uh, there was a. I thought this would go through in like five minutes, but I, I was instructed that nothing is that easy in Charleston. No. What was the hang up in getting this through? In getting this through, uh, the only problem getting it through was to, to get it through the original, as John Hardy tells me, he's getting it through the original uh, committee in the House. Uh, the attorney had some procedural problem with it, so he just gave up on it and asked uh, Senator Barrett to, to do it. And it went like, it went easy peasy after that. After that, but it was this was early in the session when you introduced this. Early in the session, right. Yeah. Also, the school transfer rule initially... It was public to public, and then it became just private to public, and now it's back to being public to public. You can transfer one public school to one other public school during your four years in high school, correct? Yeah, and it surprised me. That became a huge issue. We spent at least an hour, maybe longer than that, uh, in the House of Delegates arguing about it, and uh, we all were getting real real weary about it but uh, both sides of it were real adamant uh, and that's that's the bill that took up the most time it, it finally passed but uh, it was a mess why did it take so much time and why was it a mess well it was a mess because every it, people were on both sides of the bill and everybody that had an opinion wanted to stand up and talk about it uh, and they talked about it and they talked about it and then they talked about it uh, and we had other bills that were i thought more important uh, but it was the flavor of the week what could be more important than what affects high school sports in west virginia <laughs> come on well there you go and well, i stand I, corrected well and i i mean i personally i'm i'm happy because the public to public transfers the schools that are cheating have kids transferring public to public anyway and they're skirting the issue yeah that's right this just allows the schools that aren't cheating to be on the level playing field with the ones that are with the ones that sort of say oh well he's now living with his cousin or you know his 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 mother's sister lives in that district so he's moving there now you know nobody has to skirt the issue what is what's happening anyway mm -hmm. can can happen legally well hopefully it's put to bed now but we'll see maybe somebody will add a second one in the four years uh, yeah. when it comes it, around it was again. amazing to me how adamant the opposite sides were oh um, yeah uh, dug in people take it a little a uh, little too seriously i think maybe more than a little seriously yeah. let's talk about the tax cut larry were you happy with this tax cut or did you sign it and hold your nose i was pleased with it in fact my trepidation was that uh, a tax cut would be once again put off because of conflicts and one side saying this one side saying the other i was pleased that we got a tax cut uh, and i was really pleased uh, in the tax cut included a mechanism for future tax cuts to be made uh, as the state can afford it uh, to the point that we at some point hopefully have no personal income tax at all 
So that's 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 a big big plus. And I think everybody that was involved in that, on both sides, every side, uh, upside and downside, uh, in the end, came through real well. The DHHR split. Well, that. Uh, I'm not convinced that just splitting up an agency will make it better, but I think we have to do something because, as I said somewhere, someplace, uh, the DHHR is a hot mess. Mm -hmm. uh, and just splitting the agency is, is not the answer. We have to move forward. But I have some glimmers of hope that uh, things are going to get better, for sure and for certain they can't get any worse. On your theory toward the DHHR split, you and Bill Stubblefield agree. Oh really? By the way, Bill That's a little scary. Bill, Bill didn't think that the best that Bill didn't think that splitting DHHR was necessarily the answer just for the sake of splitting it. Well, yeah, it depending on how, how it happened, it just splitting up an agency could actually make it three times as bad as, as what it <laughs> That's was correct. before. Yeah. Uh, so, but uh, evidently there's there's some serious attention to the issues and uh, more there's more to come. There has to be more to come. How much uh Feedback did you get from teachers and state employees in your district in regards to the way PEIA premiums will be handled going forward? Huge. Uh, I voted for the reform. Uh, something had to be done because if it wasn't, uh, we weren't have, and I don't think all the teachers and state employees understood this, they wouldn't have health insurance because more and more of the, uh, the the people that were accepting the insurance that we aren't going to take it anymore. So. Um, I, I think the reform uh, was good. The problem is that uh, it pretty well wipes out the salary increase this year for teachers and state employees. And the one thing that the legislature didn't do that I that, that I wish they had done, which we we had done, uh, is do more with the salaries of state state employees and teachers. Uh, also, uh, for the benefits, uh, the not salary but the pension for retirees. Uh, State employees, teachers are underpaid and underappreciated, and we really need to do something about it. We've got uh, the uh, National Guard manning, uh, helping to man the state prisons because we just can't. Mm -hmm. we, we just can't get people to work. Uh, we've got problems all through the state, and something's got to give. The legislative pay raise, which turned out to be only one thousand dollars. That's right. That's right. Uh, I voted for it, um, but however, um, it's a privilege for sure, but it's also a sacrifice to serve in the legislature. So I Especially don't Especially from this area. It's mm -hmm. Particularly from this area. Uh, it's a long drive from here down to the state capitol, but it should be a sacrifice to serve. Uh, and I don't think anybody should be making money, but the legislators, legislators in, in West Virginia don't make much money right now a legislator and people don't believe this make twenty thousand dollars a year and in 2024 whoever's elected then will make twenty one thousand dollars a year which is not much not much money but uh, those who serve uh, really do sacrifice i had one constituent contact me and said boy it must be nice being a legislature legislator in the legislature and uh going to all these parties, being wined and dined and making these big bucks. And I thought, I don't know who you're talking about, but that sure isn't me. Well, you get, you'll get you get 20, and you won't get 21. The next class that comes in in two years is, is, or a year and a half is the ones that get that raise, correct? That's right. Right? That's right. So people will say, well, it's a 60-day session. You work two months out of the year and you get $20,000. That's $10,000 a month. That's a great rate. You don't do anything the other 10 months of the year. Oh, if that was only true. Mm -hmm. uh, I spend... Uh, probably four, five, six days a week off session doing this or that, generally at least four to five hours a day. Uh, it's just part of the territory. If you're a citizen legislator, you have to be working with the citizens. And it, it's even though it's a citizen legislature, it's truly a full-time job. Matt Miller. Yeah, I can't imagine the time that it takes just to go through the bills. You know, the late nights when you're there, just making sure that you understand what it is that you, you know, are expected to then vote for from day to day. And, and that's the beauty of the committee process, which, which weans things down. Uh, but generally, there's two or 3,000 bills introduced every year and two or 300 pass. Um, and so there's the committee helps, the committee process helps that a lot. But uh, it's not unusual. The last night of the legislature, I put in 18 hours. Uh, that day but it's not unusual even in the beginning of the legislature we need to put in at least 12 hours a day 
All right, I have to ask the question. I asked it over a decade ago of John Doyle um, on this very program in the old studio, I might add. And and so I, you just mentioned two to three thousand bills get introduced in some way, right. and a couple of hundred actually make it through. Right, and we do that year after year after year. Do we eventually run out of the need for new laws? I mean, it just seems like good grief. Do we have to have all of that in order to live our everyday lives? Well, that's true. But every time you pass a new law, that creates some five or six people that says, oh, now we got to do this, or I don't like that, and we got to do something different. Some of the bills that are introduced are, are, are really wacko. Uh, and some of them are good ideas. One of them, which I think is a wonderful idea, um, we have the Homestead Act, which gives $20,000 a year. It's in our Constitution to, to uh, retirees 65 or older uh, a $20,000 credit against their taxes uh, on, on their, uh, their property. However, it's a constitutional issue, so that can't be changed unless you have an amendment to the Constitution that's ratified by the voters. Uh, so all kinds of bills have been put in. Well, let's make it this mount. Let's make it that mount. My suggestion is instead of putting in the Constitution $20,000 a year, put in the Constitution not less than 20000 a year. There, thereafter, legislatures can increase it if, if, if the will is there, which I think it is. That bill of mine didn't get anywhere this year, but it's one of the things I'm hopeful we'll look at the interim study committee, and sooner or later we're going to get it done. There's been some bills I've introduced in previous years that – didn't happen right away, but if you keep plugging away and you're persistent, mm -hmm. it happens. One of the examples was the uh, obscure election dates we had for the school bonds, which increased the the the, the tax the cost to taxpayers uh, and also reduced turnout. We finally uh, last legislative session got that changed, so it has to be on a primary or general election day, which is something I first introduced oh back in 2011. Uh, so you just have to be persistent, and if it's a good idea, sooner or later it'll come through. You mentioned amendments. Um, the Amendment 2 that, that many thought would pass didn't. Are you happy with the way that personal property is being handled in the new tax structure? It's a Rube Goldberg system. Uh, I'm all right with it, but first you have to pay the tax. Uh, we're talking about vehicles. You have to pay the tax, uh, and then at the end of the year, uh, when you do your tax return, uh, that money is uh, given back to you. That's a awkward, cumbersome way of doing it, but because the voters said that they didn't want to change the Constitution, uh, that's, what, that's what came out, and, and I'm okay with that. Um, hopefully, we'll revisit that constitutional amendment and just like a clean sweep of it so that we can just take away that tax for, for people that didn't have to go through the paperwork. And it is a check. I know there's been a lot of debate as to is it going to be a reduction from your taxes that, you know, let's just say you pay $100 in personal property, there'll be a line item somewhere on your tax form that says I paid $100 and then they knock that off. You're saying you'll actually get the money back. It's my understanding we'll actually get the money back. Okay. Uh, but, I, you know, I've been wrong before, so it wouldn't be the first time. Mr. Bodwell. All right, Larry, you, you've talked about a couple things that you wanted to see happen, like uh, us addressing the, the shortfall in, in pay for our state employees. You know, you were talking about we don't right. have enough prison guards. Um, and you talked about a couple other things. Were there any other glaring things that you think the legislature needed to address this year that did not get did not get a bill passed to, to take care of whatever problem they are? Well, the big issue that stands out in my mind was the uh, – the, the salary for state employees and teachers and also the compensation for retirees. But by and large, I think the legislature did a really good job this year, and I, I was pleased and proud to be part of that process. Was there, what was, let me ask you this, what do you think was the craziest bill you saw proposed? Oh, you don't have to wow. say you don't have to say who proposed it, but we right. want to we want we want some humor this morning. I mean, what oh, was gee. what was the wackiest thing that's wackiest idea that somebody had? I'd have to give this some thought. I'm I right now I'm I'm drawing a blank. Well, just uh, you at the beginning had said you know there's some pretty crazy bills that come <laughs> up. I was just yeah yeah. Um, it was interesting to me. We had some new legislators that thought that being in the legislature was their opportunity to stand up and orate on almost every bill every day. Uh, that was annoying. Uh, it's been my experience that 
certainly stand up and speak out, but keep your comments short and to the point. Uh, to get up and go on and on and on uh, just makes your eyes cross. With with everything that did get passed this legislature, do you think there will be a need for, I mean, at least, I mean, I know we usually at least have one special session. Do you think we'll end up with a couple of special sessions again this year as we have in past years? That's a good question. I know we'll have, a lot of people don't understand that the legislature, in addition to being there 60 days a year, we have interim committee meetings where we look at legislation that we're going to be looking at the next the next year uh and we'll have one almost every month between now and the next um, legislative session but as far as a special session where we actually pass bills i can't see anything right now on the horizon but that could change because i know that that ends up that ends up costing the state a a lot of money it costs um about thirty two thousand dollars i'm told for each day that the that the legislature is in session uh, one of the things that might come up, uh, maybe will come up, is whenever we have federal grant money, uh, the governor in the past could just distribute it the way he wanted, but now the legislature has to approve it. So if we get a block of uh, federal money, there'll probably have to be a special session to deal with deal with that. And the way that'll be done, I'm sure, is if we're having a interim committee meetings during a given time, they'll probably schedule that special session at the same time so that they overlap. We have a request from our comment section from Damon Wright. Can Delegate Kump talk about why so many voted against the amendments to the Religious Freedom Bill, specifically those that were said to prevent discrimination? That's a good, a, a good question. Uh, I know uh, I voted, voted for it, but um, um, it seemed to me to be an easy-peasy uh, vote for me, but uh, some, I think, thought that... Uh, somehow that that would be discriminatory and i can't wrap my i can't wrap my mind around around that argument i just can't so uh, why why do you think why would they think it was discriminatory that's a good question uh i don't have the answer to it because i don't think it was larry let's talk about some of the money that the legislature gave out uh, of course the one that was probably the most incendiary was the form energy right. investment that was made that seemed to line people up on one side of that or the other with strong feelings how did you vote on form energy and tell us why i voted for it um now i i let me back up a little bit uh, i was concerned about the senate process they uh, eliminated the committee hearings uh suspended the constitutional rules and just slammed it through we didn't do that in the house uh we had uh a presentation to our caucus. Uh, we had committee hearings. We had extensive debate on on the floor. But essentially, um, what it was, um, the governor's uh, the governor's uh, developmental committee already had done a memorandum of understanding, and the legislature's responsibility was whether they're going to fund that or not. And the first bite of that apple, there's three bites, was 115 million dollars. Uh, when I first walked into this situation, I was skeptical and was leaning towards voting no. But after seeing all the information, uh, the prototype information, the uh, infrastructure deal, it was actually a better deal than what we had at Procter Gamble uh, uh, in, in, Ber- in Berkeley County. Uh, this had more safeguards and uh, I looked at it decided it was a good idea Uh, a lot of people and there's been a lot of chatter i looked at the mou went through it page by page um, and what it does like in a lot of the other deals provides the staging area for the 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 company up in uh, weirton west virginia Uh, there's about a thousand acres with the old uh, steel not quite a thousand uh, of the old steel plant that the state bought put in some roads uh, and uh, things of that nature and 55 of that acres is for this new form energy so by and large i I think it's a reasonable investment a a lot of people uh, were really upset because uh, bill gates uh, was one of the investors um, the information I got that he had less than a 10% involvement with it. And what you think of Bill Gates, and I am not a fan of Bill Gates at all, um, that wasn't the issue. The issue was, was it a, a, a reasonable um, risk for 
West Virginia to take, and I thought it was, and so I voted for it. And I, and the more I thought about it, and the more information I got, the the more sure I am about that. So, uh, but the the feedback uh, from the public has been, uh, at least from my end, what I received has has been pretty negative. Uh, uh, all kinds of arguments, uh, but uh, and the one argument I think is legitimate and one that has to be considered: should the state of West Virginia be involved in attracting any industry uh, over another one? But if you're going to do it for one, um, you have to do it for the others as well. And we're in a competitive marketplace. We've gotten Procter Gamble. We've gotten the new uh, Ironworks and Spring Mills. We've gotten all c- new core and a lot of other things. So. Uh, I couldn't in good conscience vote against it. Well, we're just about out of time. Uh, take a moment and talk to our audience and give them your review of this session. Maybe uh, what do you think should have passed that didn't, or what do you think is going to carry over to the next term? Well, the uh, the one thing that didn't pass that uh, that didn't was uh, I think we need to have a better compensation plan for the state employees and teachers and also for the pensions of our public employees. I think they're underpaid and underappreciated, and that's something we, we need to we need to work at. Um, it was a good, solid session. Uh, I, I would give it a, a good, solid B or maybe even a B-plus. Uh, I think the legislature, when it came down to the to, to the – the finish line uh, did a commendable job, uh, and I uh, was pleased to be part of it. What comes up next year, I hope the, there will be a constitutional amendment to take care of the Homestead Act for retirees. Uh, I hope that uh, we'll take some action about uh, uh, some, some other issues, uh, but uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, before we know it, we'll be in it again, and there will be issues that we didn't even think about right now. Larry, thanks for coming in this morning. Thanks for having me. It's always nice being here. Appreciate it very much. Appreciate you coming on the show during the session, too, to keep us updated. My pleasure. 